Stop doing this when you receive payments in QuickBooks Desktop. Hey everyone, my name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. First things first, if this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, also, subscribe to the channel. I sure would appreciate that. Also, head over to the QuickBooks University. Sign up for the free masterclass over there, and I'm going to show you the top three mistakes that pretty much every QuickBooks user makes. Okay, so this video... Uh, you know, stop doing this when you receive payments in QuickBooks. I got this question no less than five times this past week of people that said, hey, I've got, you know, 50 entries in this undeposited funds account, but we have already shown the deposits in the bank account and we have already reconciled our accounts. What do I do? How do I clear these out of here? So this video is not about how to clear that out of here. I've got another video on the channel about that and how to clear those out. This is about how to avoid that on the front end. So here's what typically happens. So we're here on the QuickBooks home screen and you might receive a payment from a customer. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to customers and we're going to say receive payments. So let's say you get, uh, you know, I don't know, a check or a credit card or whatever it is, and you've got to apply it to an invoice. And so you're going to go in here and you're going to say, okay, customer payment. We issued this invoice to this customer. They paid by check, let's say. So we choose check and we, we choose the customer that we're going to uh, get payment from. So we say this was Christy Abercrombie and she paid us a uh, check for $225. Okay, so we check it off here. We say $225 bucks total. It, it just automatically fills the payment amount. We say check number 55487 you know okay so we have the total amount due 225 bucks applied 225 bucks and we say great now we got that money and we hit save and close and we're done so now typically what happens is then people will go to the bank and they will make a deposit and whether it's a remote deposit it's a mobile deposit or they physically go to the bank they will go deposit this 225 dollars and what they do is they will go to typically to the check register so they'll go up here and they'll say okay let's go to the check register and they're going to say checking and they're going to say you know what on december 15th 2023 I went to the bank and I made a deposit. Payee, there's no payee since we're making a deposit. And they say 225 bucks. And they're going to say, well, now what account do I put this to? So they're going to say, well, this is actually income because this was a, you know, income from a customer. So we're going to say this, they're going to pick something. They'll say materials income and 225 bucks. And so that gets put into the register right here. So now what has happened is they have duplicated the revenue from this $225. Let me explain this. First of all, when they created the invoice on an accrual basis, they, they show that's revenue of 225 bucks. When they received the payment against the invoice on a cash basis, that is $225. Of revenue and now when they just put it into the check register that is another $225 of revenue so whether it's accrual whether it's cash they have now duplicated their revenue okay so the correct step when you do this is so you want to stop entering things in the register like this you receive the customer payment and then, and I'm going to show you in just a second how to turn this off and on and how to change this. But then, instead of going to the check register and putting in $225 deposit, you want to instead go to banking and make deposits. All right. So you're going to see here this make deposit screen. Now, if there are payments that need to be deposited, if we click on payments, you're gonna see payments to deposit. Here is our $225. There's some other ones in here, the sample company file, but this is the one we're concerned with, 225 bucks. And I wanna explain how this got here and where it went. So it's a two-step process. First of all, you receive payment against the invoice. Second, you go to make deposit check off the deposit 225 bucks and click OK. It's going to pre-fill the screen. You make sure it's going to the right account and everything looks right. And then you hit save and close. 
Now it has put the 225 into the checking account and you can see here from undeposited funds to the checking account. This one was the one we entered directly. And so you can see now, now we have duplicate deposits. Now you should catch this in the monthly bank reconciliation, but sometimes people don't reconcile. Okay, so it's a two-step process in QuickBooks and it usually defaults to this way. When you receive the payment, it gets put to this account, undeposited funds. And you can see the undeposited funds right here on the balance sheet. It is an asset, and this is supposed to represent money you have received that you have not deposited to the bank. Okay, so when we moved that 225, it took it out of undeposited funds, and it put it up to the checking. So receive payment, it puts it here. Make deposit, it puts it here. Now, QuickBooks does this by default uh, because they don't want you, let's say that you, you know, you make deposits once a week or twice a week or whatever the case may be, and but you want to show that the customer has paid their invoice, that you have received the payment. So you receive the payment, the customer in QuickBooks shows that they don't owe any money anymore, but then if you don't go to the bank for a few days, then you make the deposit in QuickBooks, and that way you're not over inflating your bank account as you're writing checks or paying th for things or using your debit card or, or whatever. You're spending money. You don't want to overspend your account. So it's kind of a, a safety net to make sure that you don't overspend your account. Now, in the example that I showed in the very beginning of this video, that's why people get this buildup of undeposited funds that just kind of never goes away is because they don't you do the step, make deposit, move it from undeposited funds up to the checking account. So you want to make sure you do that. Now, I want to take you over here and show you where this is. If you go up to the edit drop down menu and you go to preferences, let me move this box to this screen. Okay. We've got all these options, but if you go to payments and you go to company preferences, you're going to see there is a checkbox right here. Receive payments, use undeposited funds as a default to deposit to account. So uncheck that box if you don't want that to happen. And when you do that and you receive payment, it's going to ask you, where do you want to deposit this? And if you say checking, then just let it go straight to checking. And this will take a step out of here because some people deposit their checks every single day or their payments, or maybe it's a credit card or whatever. And so just uncheck this and it takes out that step of having to do make deposit. All right. So the point being here, stop entering these deposits directly, these receive payments directly into the register when you take them to the bank to deposit them. Instead, if you're going to put them to undeposited funds, go ahead and receive payment and then go to make deposits and clear it out that way. Hope this video helped. If you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave those below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.